In today's video, I'm going to show you my product photography toolkit. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, and uh, today's video, I'm going to go through my product photography toolkit. Uh, so this is the kit that I use whenever I'm shooting any, any products. And I've had some questions about this. Um, so I thought I'd just make a video about everything that I have in here. Um, this toolkit's sort of been put together over the last few years and uh, some things have, um, I've removed some things from it and, uh, and added new things. But after a few years now, this is pretty much everything I use. There's a couple of things that aren't in here, but I'll go through those as well. Um, I'll also put a link in the description to a blog article where I go through all of these items uh, in details. And if you want to get any of the stuff that I've got in here as well, I'll put li uh, links in the description as well, but there'll be a link uh, also to the blog article of my new website that I've just, um, that I've just launched. Uh, ministryofphoto.com uh, so if you want to go in there and check it out you'll find the blog that blog article as well as all a whole bunch of other stuff as well in there um, and uh, so yeah check it out but uh, all the details will be in there as well plus uh, plus I'll also add the details in the description of this video so let's uh, let's just kick off with this um, first of all the case so I used to originally use um, just a plastic tub to keep all the stuff I find this a lot easier because a lot of the times I'm working on my own when I'm shooting products. So anything that's got a handle, it's just easier to transport um, if, I, if I need to just move it around. So uh, this is the one that I use. It's just a cheap case. Um, again, all the links are going to be in the description. So if you, you, you can just check it out in there. Um, I did consider having a, a Pelican case, but the Pelican cases, number one, they're quite, well, no, well a few things actually, they're, they're expensive. Um, they can be a little bit heavy. And the other thing is inside they've got those foam uh, those little cubes that you pick out to make the compartments and um, they th that foam actually takes up quite a bit of room in there so instead i decided to go with this case um, which has little dividers in there um, but they are little hard set dividers like this one here as well so um, you can just um, move these around once it, they're not permanent like the styrofoam one if you use the sorry not styrofoam the foam ones if you pull the, the cubes out of that one and you've got a permanent shape with it whereas the, these ones you can just keep changing it around so um so let's start off with a few a few different things so um um what's in here wire i use a lot of wire um this is called armature wire and you can get these in uh in art supplies uh stores and what it is it's it's wire that's it's very very flexible but it won't break and um what you can do with these is you can you can make different shapes so that you can hold things you know a particular shape of something uh, an example the last time i used this was uh i was photographing some shoes and i needed the shoelaces to be in a particular shape so i inserted this through the inside of the shoelace and then i was you know able to just manipulate that as well but i've used this on um, other materials um, clothing items and so forth in order to just shape them uh, so i've got different sizes of these as well but there's some thicker ones as well um, so armature wire and it's not just armature wire but i've got different types of wire as well so that's that's the armature stuff but i also find that sometimes even just going to um, electrical stores and uh, getting different types of little wires as well um, they also it's just handy to have in here as well so uh, oh, while we're here, cleaning cloths. So these are different types of cloths. That's the, the, um, that's more of a, like a cotton type uh, for soaking up liquids. And that's, um, that's a lint-free cloth as well. Very important as well when you're shooting products, always clean your products. Um, it's gonna take you, uh, you know, 5% of the time if you actually do it on the product itself rather than uh, leaving it to do it in Photoshop. So um, that's some cloths. Um, I've got a list in here as well, so I'm just referencing back to make sure that I uh, don't miss anything. Uh, scissors, obviously, uh, have a selection of uh, scissors. You don't need to get anything expensive, just, you know, scissors. Um, same thing with knives as well, just box cutter type knives work fine. Um, I've also got um, different types of, uh, with the wire as well, I've got some cord in here as well. And uh, so this is non-stretch cord and, and, and it's, it's, um, it's handy for um, more, I guess, heavier items. If you need to suspend them or you need something to be secured, um, I tend to use blind cord. So this is uh, for those uh, like Venetian blinds and so forth. 
um, it doesn't stretch. There's no give to this at all. So, uh, which is important because if you are suspending, a, say, a heavy item um, and you put it in a particular spot, you don't want that cord then to stretch because it, it will move the item from the position that you put it on right so you want everything to be secure and you don't want it to move that's the thing with product photography once you set it you want to you want to stay there um then i've got um toothpicks um handy for a, a million different things if you're shooting food photography if you need uh, a strawberry to you know stay on top of a pancake you just skewer this into the into the strawberry into the pancake and it just stays there um, but a million different uses for toothpicks, so I keep a little packet in there as well. Um, I've also got glycerin as well. Um, so glycerin is a vegetable type uh, product that um, I use with little spray bottles, um, like this one here. I've got a whole bunch of these, so th these are something else that I carry in here. Um, and I use a mixture of 50% glycerin and 50% water. A lot of people have different, you know, recipes for this, but if you are trying to simulate condensation on a bottle, a drink bottle, for example, if you just use water, the water will just drip. The, the little uh, droplets won't form as well as if you use um, a combination of glycerin and, uh, and water as well. So um, it will stay, if you do that, it will stay on the bottle for a lot longer and the, the, the droplets will have a more rounded shape. So that's really, really handy for situations like that. So that's glycerin. You could just pick this up in a, a drugstore or a chemist. Um, but um, so that's that. Uh, spritzer bottles, I just carry a whole bunch of them. I've got like, I've got loads of these. I've got like a whole tub full of these as well because they all tend to, um, they tend to be just a little bit different. So when you, and sometimes you, you just, you'll never know which one is going to look right. So I've got a whole bunch of these and I just keep, you know, I just keep trying until I, I get the look that I want on the product. Um, then I've got some, uh, I've got some brushes as well, useful for things uh, when you're trying to, this is actually for, well, I'm, again, a lot of things. If you're trying to remove dust from a particular spot where it's hard to get your hand in with, a, say, the cloth, you can use the brush. Um, if you are brushing oil on food, um, these are also handy. They're handy for, again, a million different things, whatever you need to brush on um, where you can't get your finger in there or you shouldn't get your finger in there. So brushes as well come in very, very handy. Um, I've got um, rubber bands, I mean, rubber bands. Um, uh, so this is good. this is a weird one. These are tampons. Um, so I'll explain this. If you are shooting hot drinks um, and you're trying to capture the steam from the hot drink in the shot itself, rather than doing it in Photoshop, then first of all, you sh it, it's really dangerous to have hot drinks on set, uh, people can get hurt. You could splash, you could drop the drink, or you could get splashes. Um, and uh, so, one of the things that we do is you use tampons. Now, if you get a tampon and you dip that into into water and you put it in the microwave for about you know 30 seconds, you then drop the tampon inside the cup, and you will get uh, amazing steam coming out of it for uh, quite a while, actually, long enough, definite for you to uh, photograph it. Um, and, and yeah, they just work really well. So yeah, tampons. Um, so eyedroppers, I've got a whole bunch of different eyedroppers as well. Um, again, you can imagine that if you, if you're shooting, uh, products or any sort of liquid products, um, these would come in really handy. So they, they've just got different little sizes at the, at, at the ends. And also like some of the, these are just straight, but that, that's a little bit longer. Um, and it's got the little bent end at the end. So if you're trying to get somewhere, you know, a little bit more difficult, they can be, they can be really handy. If you, um, if you are uh, working with some thicker li liquids or where there's more volume, like say a sauce, sometimes I will use uh, these as well. So these are called pipettes. You get, you get them at art stores as well, and they'll hold more liquid than one of these. Um, and they're a lot longer as well. So what they are, again, it's, it's similar to an eyedropper tool. So you just, you know, um, yeah, you just squeeze, pick up the liquid and it's very easy to drop as well. They don't drip, which are really good. 
um, and uh, they are very, very cheap as well. So th these are called pipettes. Again, there'll be links for all this stuff in, in the description. So don't need to, uh, don't need to worry about that. Uh, whilst we are on liquids, uh, little funnels. Um, if you are shooting liquids where you need the liquid in the, in the cup or in the glass or whatever you're using, um, the liquid goes in last. So typically what you do is you set up your set uh, you put the glass and all the, all the components in the, right, in the right place and only then do you put the liquid at the very end because otherwise if you're moving around you could spill it, um, you could stain the inside of the, of the cup if it's something that's like say coffee where it's, you know, it's brown. So uh, what you do is you set up your set and then at the very end that's where you use something like a funnel to very slowly pour the liquid into the container. So I use these ones because they, they sort of, you know, they just squashed to nothing. So, uh, for fitting in here, it's much better than having a plastic funnel. Um, what else I got? Um, this is uh, this one's called dissolver, but this uh, it's it's basically this stuff is used. Um, uh, if you if you there's another product called goof off as well, which is when you are shooting. Let's say I'm shooting this. Um, this particular uh, bottle and a lot of the times what you do is when you're shooting bottles you will shoot the bottle and then the label separately or you will apply the, the label at a later stage um, so what you do is you peel the label off and you'll get some residue some some um, glue or adhesive residue and that's what this is for so this um, you just rub this on and it dissolves it it's basically like some sort of this like a solvent type of liquid a um, whole bunch of different uh, brands for this stuff. That's the one that I use. Um, what else have I got? I've got uh, wooden blocks. I've got a whole bunch of these. These are just handy for, um, it's, it's just, I guess, product placement. So if you're trying to get something that raised off the ground, off, off the surface, uh, then you would use something like this uh, to set up, set it up on the, uh, can you see that? In the, yeah, so you would set that up so that if you wanted to pick up, say, a shadow, uh, you would get a normal, a natural shadow because um, it's a lot better to do it in, in, in camera than it is to do it in Photoshop. So again, it's just to, you know, lift things up and so forth, like little apple boxes, if you like, but for product. Um, tape, all sorts of tape. I mean, it's whatever, right? I've got um, electrical tape, I've got regular scotch tape, some gaff tape, more scotch tape. I've got a whole bunch of different, uh, this is actually, when actually when we're talking about tape, I'll bring this one up because this is important. I think this is double-sided tape. Um, again, really useful for uh, just securing things on set. So um, you basically just, it looks like regular tape, but you peel that off, you stick it onto a particular, you cut a piece of that off, you stick it onto the surface and then it allows you to peel the back and you end up with this uh, sticky side at the other end. So again, really good for um, all sorts of things. But yeah, double-sided tape. Um, screwdriver set, just whatever, you know, you need to, uh, sometimes you may need to dismantle products uh, in order to get them to look right uh, or, or to do things to them and then reassemble everything again. So um, uh, screwdriver set, fishing line, Again, this is for uh, mostly securing things or mostly um, if you are suspending something. Um, again, I was shooting another set of shoes actually not that long ago and uh, you just basically suspend the shoe in, 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 in the air using something like fishing line. Fishing line is better than string because um, it's translucent. It's very, very thin and it's very, very strong. So you don't need a thick string. Um, but because it's translucent, when you go into Photoshop and you're trying to edit um, string out, fishing line is actually a lot easier to, to, um, uh, to uh, I guess, use the healing brush or, or anything else, whatever your technique is, because it does tend to keep the color because it is translucent. So Photoshop, rec uh, it, it makes it easier for Photoshop. So yeah, fishing line, um, that's fishing line. Measuring tape. This is important because a lot of the times your shoots will go over a day. And if, you do, if, you, if you're doing a shoot that goes for more than one day or more than one session, um, and you need to come back to it, say, um, a week later, which often happens with products because sometimes you may get 
uh, the products in stages because they've been manufactured. So you start shooting the first one and then they just want you to just keep, uh, keep the same set but swap different products. And then if you need to tear down your set and you need to build it up again, everything needs to be in the correct spot again. It needs to be exactly the same, including the lights, the camera, um, you know, and, and the products themselves. So with uh, you will need something like this in order to be able to then draw out a lighting diagram as well as a product layout um, diagram. And it needs to be very precise. So having something like this, this is not so much for the actual products. So for the actual products, I do have um, a ruler in here as well that I use um, that um, I've, uh, I've actually taken away. <laughs> somewhere here it is so this is the ruler that I use um, for the product placement this is more for the camera itself because you you'll have the camera at a particular height um, or in a, in a particular dif distance from the products so that's where this comes in handy because often the camera is quite away um, so uh, so that's too short to do that but for the for the products usually a ruler will do so I do have um, a ruler as well so ruler measuring tape tweezers I've got tweezers of all sorts, actually. Uh, again, they don't have to, these don't have to be expensive. Um, you can usually buy a set of these, um, but they're just different shapes and, and, and sizes to, to, to get in there. Some of them have little flat uh, paddles at the end. Um, some have a little, sort of like a little bend thing in there as well. So uh, tweezers just for placing things. Um, bull clips, loads of bull clips in here as well. So again, these are really, good for all, all sorts of things. Um, and um, they're like little A-clamps, uh, which I, I don't keep my A-clamps in here as well, but I do use those in product photography as well. Um, they're cotton buds. So cotton buds are very, like Q-tips, um, very, very handy uh, for soaking up uh, or cleaning up around if you're shooting, say, food and you need to clean up around a plate uh, and there's a particular spot that's hard to get to, uh, these work really well. Um, what else have we got? Blue tack. So this, I mean, this is, again, it, it, a million users. So if you need to, um, if you need to actually, this is, I'll bring, I'll point this thing out to you. So if, um, let's say I'm shooting this bottle as well. Um, sometimes you may need to shoot a bottle um, on its side and once you place it on there you're gonna get this product just rolling so this is really handy for just securing things on set and then it's not gonna move right so again but there's like a million different uses for this this is just blue tag yeah. um, what else have I got blue tag um, ice so fake ice if you've ever tried to shoot um, drinks with real ice, uh, you're gonna know how difficult that is. It causes the condensation on the outside of the glass, uh, which then starts, that turns into drips. Um, the ice starts to melt, so you just don't do it that way. You essentially uh, design your drink. You put your drink in at room temperature, you put your fake ice on, and then using the glycerin, and the spray bottles, you create your own condensation, okay? So, um, and then you can shoot all day and it, it doesn't change, everything remains the same. So with ice, so you can pay hundreds of dollars for one cube of ice. A lot of, it, it's so expensive that you can actually even hire blocks of ice, which is insane. Um, if a product requires, if, it, if it's a really high-end product shoot, I would definitely recommend to get some of the, um, the top end um, ice cube menu, uh, I guess, products that are, that are available. Um, but if it doesn't require it, then these will actually do quite fine. And I will do a video in the future about how I made some of these. So some of these I've actually made myself. Um, they're not as good as the ones that, that, that the really expensive ones that you can buy, but they're better than the ones that you can just the cheap ones. So they're somewhere in, in, in the middle. And I might make a video about how to do these yourself. If you guys are interested, just let, let me know in the, in the um, in the comments. Um, when it comes to, uh, I guess, plastic, I guess we, I've shown you the little wooden cubes. I've also got these little translucent, these are just acrylic blocks as well. Again, these are used for racing products off the, off the table, um, but because they're translucent, if I've got a light behind them, it, um, it doesn't cast a, so much of a shadow as, as these ones. So that's where these, uh, these come in handy as well. And they usually come in a set 
um, of different sizes. Um, I'll put a link to, to these ones here, which have served me quite well. Um, what else have I got in here? So this is um, fake ice. So you can get really expensive stuff um, for using fake ice. It's like, um, um, it's specific to like a theatrical product. I've used this before and I've had really, really good results with. This is just fake snow. You can get this, this is, uh, you buy this for kids to, to play with. You just put a little bit of water in there. And if you just get like a teaspoon of this and you add some water in there, it turns into like a jelly type of um, uh, sort of consistency, but it does, it really does look like ice. So when you are doing say a picture of a, a cold beer bottle, let's say, um, using the combination of the glycerin in the water with the spray bottles and then adding a little bit of ice and the this is where the um, uh, I've lost my brushes but this is where the brushes come in really handy to to brush the ice onto the bottles it looks really really good and I've actually delivered um, some pretty high-end shots to people using this product which is really inexpensive and it looks fantastic so um, yeah ice um, this is a, this is a, a, it's called Kitchen Bouquet. Um, a lot of you probably know what this is. So this is a cooking product. It's a browning um, um, product, I guess, when, you, when you're doing things like roasts, it just makes the, everything look a little bit browner. I don't, what we use this for is if you are simulating something like say a cup of coffee. Um, with this, it allows you to, uh, it, it's a fake cup of coffee essentially, right? Which actually looks better than coffee. So. Um, so that's what this is. Uh, so you can you can make all sorts of. I've made like uh, simulation Coca Cola, coffee, um, uh, tea. So all sorts of stuff with this stuff. It just it just looks really good. So yeah, kitchen bouquet. Um, and I think that oh, actually you know we've got a couple of things. So we've got a couple of markers as well. So this is like um, just uh, like uh, sharpies. And then I've got a whole bunch of. Uh, like some more stuff in here as well. So we've got Velcro strips as well. So these are good because they, um, yeah, just really handy to tie things up with. And unlike cable ties, they come, they come off really easily. So some Velcro clips. I've got some card as well. So different types of card, there's a whole bunch of them in there as well. So these are good for reflection or, or bouncing light back in. Um, so, uh, you know, silver, white, uh, black for subtracting light from the from the products. Um, this is also where the ball clips come in handy as well. So if you don't know this, you can actually, if you put a ball clip over there, you've now got yourself a little stand down at the bottom and that will that will stay upright as well. So, um, so card. I've also got different types of colored cards as well. So these are really good for bouncing a little bit of, uh, just from a, a special effect, I guess, if, you, if you're trying to bounce, bounce a little bit of colored light back into a product. Uh, so things like, you know, gold cards and these uh, different cards. Just um, a tip with these, these are just sample uh, paint cards that I just get from my hardware store as well. So this is, uh, you know, they're just the, the little samples that you pick up. So I use those ones. And then I've also got some white ones and uh, believe it or not, I found this particular color. So this is a Dulux uh, 5W white on white. I think it's, it's what it's called. And I found this actually really handy for setting my white balance. So I, I, I almost use, I use this as a white balance card sometimes. Um, it's slightly off, I think, to the to the warm side, but uh, very easy to, very easy to correct. But cards, you need cards. Um, the other thing I have in here is a pad of tracing paper. If um, if you're ever in um, need of a diffuser and you don't have anything with you, tracing paper works really well. You just pull a sheet of this off and um, I don't have a light with me at the moment, but this is, I don't know if you can see this, it, it's slightly translucent. So this is just a really easy way to, to diffuse light. If you're, if you're caught in a pinch and you don't have anything, you've got this pad, you can actually, you can actually tape a whole bunch of these and, uh, and cover a whole light panel or, or whatever with it. And it works really well. There's hardly any uh, color casting to this, it's pretty neutral. And you can put two sheets if you, if you want to as well. In fact, I've got uh, some diffusers that I've made myself that is just made of the, of the just, it's a bigger pad than this. So they're just bigger sheets 
and I've made some um, using a photo frame. I've made uh, diffusion panels, but this stuff works really well. So I carry uh, one of these in with me in here as well. And then I've also got in here, I've got a whole bunch of um, different gels as well, colored gels. Um, if you don't know what these are for, they're theatrical gels that you put in front of lights to give, um, yeah, basically you're just coloring the light. So uh, that's what these are for. Uh, Ziploc bags, you know, just for, just the Ziploc bags and you need Ziploc bags. Um, I don't think I've got anything else here to show you. Um, so that's it, basically, that is everything that's inside my toolkit. Um, there's a couple of things that I don't have in here that, um, it, that well, it, it, they don't live here, but things like a glue gun, um, A clamps, some cinefoil as well, but I keep that with that, that sort of goes across other shoots as well. And I use that for other things. So they, I don't keep those in here, but um, I know that if I was to go to a product shoot, all I need to do is just grab this kit and I'm pretty much, you know, sorted out to resolve whatever a challenge, whatever problem I run into, I can fix with the stuff that's in here. So um, I hope you enjoy this. I know it's a little bit of a, a long video, um, but uh, hopefully it's something that's useful to you. It, you. Look, and let me just say, you don't need a kit like this. This is something that you put together over time. Um, but it's all pretty much inexpensive stuff for the most part. So if you were to start doing uh, product photography, you can just start picking a few of these things, get yourself a tub or a case or something, and just keep throwing it in there so that you have it available uh, anytime that you need to do any other shoots. And eventually you'll end up with, um, you know, uh, a kit that looks like this or similar to, similar to this. So. Um, if you did find this useful, please give this video a like. Um, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, please consider doing so. It's great to have uh, uh, as many people as possible watching these videos. I'll, I'll make more videos like this as well um, to try and help and, and with uh, photography, videography, and uh, anything else that you've got uh, questions on. Just leave me a, a comment or, or a question in the, in, the, um, in the comments and I promise to get back to you. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.